I'm Dom Forty from Forty's Inboard and Auto Connection, and uh, we're celebrating our 60th year. Basically, my dad and mom started the business in 1956 through a handshake with a customer that wanted my dad to uh, get in the car business. Um, he was working at one of the local dealerships, and, and this fellow set him up in business. I grew up in the business, me and my brother. My brother went on to start Turbo Action Racing Automatic Transmissions. I worked there for about four years in research development. And my brother was a street racer from day one in St. Pete, and um, my, he used to break the automatic transmissions in his 55 Chevy all the time. And my dad said, you know what, you better learn how to build your own transmissions because uh, I'm tired of building them for you. So that's how he got in that business. Came back and took over my dad's business in 1977. We specialized in American muscle cars. In 2004, we got into the ski boat business because both of my sons were professional water skiers and my oldest son works on the car side and my youngest son works on the boat side. And so we got into the boat business, that's on the front half, and our car business is on the back half. And uh, they are now taking over the regime of running the business. Uh, so that's uh, where we're at leading up to this 60 years. We started out in a little Standard Oil gas station in downtown St. Pete. My mom used to work at the front gas pumps and uh, my dad went in the back and repair. And me and my brother pretty much just used, used to play around the shop. Because of starting out in business in that time frame, we couldn't afford to stay in a home and the gas station, so we lived in the gas station. It had living quarters. And actually, the station at that time was very more advanced. It was more like today's gas stations where they had the convenience store. We converted the convenience store into living quarters, and my brother and I lived in the back. And then uh, I used to come out in the, in the shop and uh, my dad would take apart ball bearings and stuff and I used to cut them all up and make them into uh, little bombs for my, <laughs> my soldiers and stuff. <laughs> so um, it was fun work living in the shop, but uh, also you would get very, uh, you know, pretty dirty doing that kind of stuff. Needless to say, I expanded on it, continued to grow it and I started a body shop on the south side of St. Pete back then for doing body and paint work because we wanted to get into full restorations. So, uh, but it was a real hassle going from the south side of town to the north side of town and running the two businesses being separate. So we found a newer location and put the two businesses together. And that formed 40's Auto Body and Auto Repair. Well, when I first learned to drive, I. Uh, my brother taught me how to drive out here at Terra Verde in a 1965 uh, Al Camino. And this was kind of an unusual Al Camino because it was a uh, 327, 300 horse, four barrel, four speed, dual exhaust, air conditioned, power steering, power brake, factory tack, bucket seats, console. It was like an SS Chevelle, um, which you hard, I've never seen another Al Camino like it. I learned to drive in that. It was extremely quick, uh, a lot quicker than a 16 year old should have been driving. And my dad felt that way, so he decided it was time to get me out of that vehicle. And uh, one of our customers, uh, the wife's husband died and uh, had a 61 Ford Falcon with a three on the tree, 170 cubic inch, six cylinder. So that became my car. I was extremely upset about that because I went from a nice high performance car into a basic Econo car, no less the cheapest Ford ever built, the Falcons. So I, uh, being upset, decided I wanted to really try to make this car break, and I trashed on it like crazy. I used it like a Jeep out in the sand dunes and all of that, but I couldn't break it, and it was also giving me over 20 miles per gallon. So I, beca I became, uh, so to speak, pretty imp impressed with this car, so I started looking around, and I started liking the Mustangs. So my first car that I ended up buying, I sold the Falcon because my dad bought it, and I bought a 1965 Mustang convertible used and I fixed it all up. I used to go to the junkyard and, and scavenge parts off the GT Mustangs and add them onto my car. So that's how I kind of got into the Mustang side of the business. Growing up here in the Bay Area, of course, we're surrounded by water and uh, my dad loved boats and uh, he started out with a 13 foot and then an 18 foot and then a 21 foot, a 28 foot, a 32 foot and ended up with a 43 footer. And I used to water ski out in the Bay Area. And uh, when my sons grew up, I wanted to get them into water sports because it's a great sport to get into as far as family oriented and very makes you, keeps you really healthy and athletic. And uh, so I got them into water skiing. We ended up moving to Lake Seminole where they grew up on 
and they became very good at what they were at doing and uh, we joined the Tampa Bay Water Ski Show Team, became amateur skiers. They got selected to go ski at Cypress Gardens and uh, ski professionally and uh, so they were skiing at the gardens and my oldest was skiing in San Antonio, Texas SeaWorld. So one thing led to another and we decided we wanted to be a, a boat dealer and that's how we ended up looking for a boat that would fit our needs because show skiers are multi-sport skiers and we ended up with the Tiger Line because they're a multi-sport boat. I, as I said earlier, uh, I had basically I'm kind of self-taught uh, as far as I would go to various different clinics but I also would do a lot of reading. I get all the trade magazines and they have a ton of information in them and learning from them and I in keeping up with the current vehicles over it's kind of evolutionary as far as if you stay up with the with the current things that are happening on a yearly basis you don't really get behind as I said once before if you uh, if you quit learning you pretty much are dead because you just um, you're not going to stay up with with uh, the technology in the day there was a TV series called uh, Kung Fu and it was David Carradine was the actor and he was learning from the masters and the masters were teaching him everything about defense as well as living in the world and what you'd be up against and they used to call him grasshopper and they would say grasshopper when you have when you can take the stone from my hand you will become a master so basically um, the, even the masters, you can never be better than the master unless the master quits because he's learning every day the same as you are. And so therefore, that's why I said, if you stay up with everything on a day-to-day, year-to-year basis, you will not get behind on technology. So one year I decided, you know, ASC is, uh, is a certification which is called the Automotive Society of Engineering. And um, they certified mechanics, um, you would take tests and most tests were about 200 questions long. And um, so I, uh, there's about seven tests and so I decided to take them just to see if I could pass them and uh, uh, I took them all in one time and so I ended up uh, taking them all in one night and I ended up passing them all and I became a mas ASE master tech for what it's worth. Um, and I only did it for my own, on my own uh, feel good type of thing. I didn't really do it uh, because I wanted to advertise it as much as I just wanted to see if I could do it. So that's how I, uh, I became ASC certified. I also have certifications with the marine industry on various different things and I'm also on the board of our local marine institute here or, or our training school and I do PowerPoint training for them. Since the beginning when my parents started the business uh, we, we've always been a little different than the other businesses we've had we established more relationships with the customers and become friends with the customers and the days when my parents used to run the shop we used to every year as kids and family used to clean up the entire back of the shop decorate it with Christmas uh, decorations put out tables set up all kinds of food snacks drinks and that and even had uh, local entertainment people come in and we used to have a open house for like two days in a row for the Christmas holidays and the and the all the customer base would come in and and celebrate the holidays with us and then we used to go out to the uh, Max Memorial uh, picnic park back then and uh, used to have our boat out there and customers would come out and we'd have cookouts and that so we've kept on with that tradition we usually get very uh, we, has, we, we have relationships with all our customers um, and it's more like family to us than a customer so um, that's you know how we operate that's the way it's been so everybody is feel, you know we always feel free for the, our, our customers to come in anytime they want and and you know walk around through the shop look at things talk about stuff ask questions because we establish relationships with a customer the best advertisement you can have in any kind of business is word of mouth you can do you can spend lots of money on advertisements on television, newspapers, uh, now emails, you name it, but you still get the most results from personal customers telling the other, their friends. And over the years in our car business, um, we've always had uh, people would come in uh, because of the Mustangs or because of Corvettes, because uh, we specialize, like I said, in American muscle. 
and they will come in and they'll they'll say hey I was talking to one of your customers they said you're an expert on the Mustang or a Corvette and I always kind of straighten them out right away nobody's an expert on anything you are always learning if you quit learning you're dead so basically after that statement I say what do you what do you need what are you looking what do you need to find out and we that's how we establish you know what they're in for um, so over the years that's how we have competed with the competition and we're more of a custom and hands-on instead of a production line type of thing however nowadays what's really tough is you have all of these uh, reality shows about restoration of cars and that and they make it very difficult for our kind of business not because of of the work or getting the job it's mainly that they make it look like you can do a car in a couple of weeks and that's not the case they make it they make it ridiculous so you'll have people come in and think oh well I watched it on TV and it can be done in no time at all and it's like no it really can't because it takes many many hours of work from tear down to assembly to everything you're gonna do and yeah you can throw something together like they do on TV but I guarantee you that those cars don't perform run well or hold up very well so that's how we compete